Did you know that this June 12, 2023 marks the 125th anniversary of Philippine independence? That's because on June 12, 1898, the Filipino revolutionaries proclaimed the independence of the Philippines and the liberation of the Filipino people. Indeed, it was the first in Southeast Asia to break free from colonial rule. Now unknown to many today, the Philippine Revolution of the 1800s became a beacon of inspiration and empowerment for many in the region to pursue their own liberation. In fact, many independence movements were inspired by the Filipino Revolution. So in today's video and this fascinating journey, we'll dive into the rich tapestry of Southeast Asian history and explore the vibrant celebrations that mark the sovereignty and independence of the nations in this diverse region. Southeast Asia is home to a multitude of nations and diverse indigenous peoples, each with its own unique heritage, traditions, and histories of independence. You know, from the majestic temples of Cambodia to the lush landscapes of Vietnam, from the tropical shores of Indonesia to the bustling cities of Singapore, this region is a treasure trove of cultural diversity. So join us as we take you into a captivating journey to the National Days and Independence Days of these remarkable nations. Let's dig deeper and learn more about how these countries fought for their freedom, challenged colonial powers, and emerged as proud independent nations. Mabuhay, or in Kapampangan, luwid kayo. Welcome back to another history video. It's me, Kirby Aralio, your friendly Pinoy historian. And if you are new to my channel, in this channel, I make videos about our people's history, culture, and everything in between. So if you like learning about the Philippines, Southeast Asia, and beyond, like the diaspora, don't forget to like, share this video, comment down below, and please, please subscribe. And in today's video, we'll be digging deeper and learning more about the different national days and independence days across Southeast Asia. So without further ado, let's begin in no particular order. First up is Vietnam. The National Day or Nai Cok Han is celebrated in Vietnam every year on the 2nd of September. One might have assumed that this Independence Day or National Day was chosen to mark the end of the Vietnam War with the United States and the full independence and reunification of Vietnam in 1975. However, the Vietnamese National Day actually marks the day in 1945 when Ho Chi Minh, the leader of the Vietnamese Revolution, read out the Vietnamese Declaration of Independence of Vietnam at Badin Square in Hanoi. This was just a few weeks after the end of the Second World War when Vietnam, which had then been occupied by the now defeated Japanese, was experiencing a power vacuum in the absence of French colonial rule. This date was chosen in the aftermath of the Vietnam War, which ended in 1975 as the country's national day and is today celebrated accordingly. Now let's go to the Kingdom of Cambodia. The Independence Day of Cambodia, which is celebrated on the 9th of November every year in the country is its national holiday. This marks the declaration of independence within the country from French colonial rule on the 9th of November 1953. So in the aftermath of the Second World War, French control of Indochina was extremely weakened and then King Norodom Sihanouk was pressing for greater independence for Cambodia from the French. Now unknown to many, the government in Paris had maintained the traditional Cambodian monarchy during colonial times and so the Khmer King became a figurehead for resistance against French rule in the aftermath of World War II. Eventually, this resulted in the Independence Declaration in 1953. But sadly, it was followed by bloody decades of civil war and the tyranny and the atrocities of the Khmer Rouge in the 1970s. But nevertheless, you know, four decades later, after the fall of the Khmer Rouge, Cambodia's Independence Day is celebrated with national festivities and parades around the Independence Monument in Phnom Penh, the kingdom's capital. Next up is Laos. Laos National Day is celebrated on the 2nd of December every year. And this is a commemoration of the day in 1975 when the Patet Lao independence movement declared Laos independence from royalist rule, which had been established in 1953 following the end of direct French colonial rule in Laos. Now, Laos had been enormously impacted by the wider Vietnam War and the conflicts in Cambodia throughout the Cold War period. In fact, Laos holds the record of being the most bombed country in the world. But following the end of the Vietnam War in 1975, the Vietnamese helped the Laos independence movement in removing the shackles of royalist rule and thus establishing the Laos People's Democratic Republic. However, this was not the end of the conflict in Laos, which continued on for many years to 
overcome down to the end of the 20th century before the nation became a stable modern country that we are familiar with today. So now let's hop over to Thailand. Thailand has an extremely unique national day by comparison with the vast majority of nations in Latin America, in Africa, the Middle East, and across Southeast Asia. And this is for the simple reason that Thailand was never fully colonized by the Western powers, a rare exception outside of Europe. Thus, while most nations celebrate their national day in honor of when they acquired independence from empires like Britain, France, Germany, the Dutch, Portugal, or Spain, or the US, the Thai people instead celebrates the national day of Thailand on the 5th of December every year to commemorate and celebrate the birth of the beloved king Pumipon Adulade, who was born on December 5th, 1927, and who subsequently went on to rule the country from 1946 to 26. He in fact holds the record of the third longest reigning monarch in world history. Now after his death in 2016, a decision was taken to continue to celebrate the National Day of Thailand on his birthday. And now from Thailand, let's cross over down south to Malaysia. The national holiday of the Federation of Malaysia, known as Hari Merdeka or Hari Kebangsaan, is celebrated on the 31st of August every year, a commemoration which is outlined in the Malay Constitution. It is celebrated on this day owing to the fact that on August 31st, 1957, Malaysia declared its independence from the British Empire after approximately 130 years of colonial control. However, there is a debate today within Malaysia, you know, as to whether or not this should be acknowledged as the national holiday of the country. Because back in 1957, Malaysia was not yet Malaysia. It was instead known as the Federation of Malaya, consisting of only the states within the Malay Peninsula. And so, others would argue that the 16th of September should be celebrated instead. Because this was the day back in 1963 when Sarawak and North Borneo, or what is now Sabah, officially joined with the Malay Peninsula to form the modern nation-state of the Federation of Malaysia. Nevertheless, today, the National Day of Malaysia, or Hari Merdeka, or Hari Kebangsaan, is celebrated extensively and with foreign dignitaries from all across Southeast Asia. So before we continue, here's a few reminders. Today's video is just a brief introduction and overview of the fascinating histories of Southeast Asia's National and Independence Days. So check out the links below for a list of sources and recommended readings to learn more. And if there's anything that I missed or anything that you want to add, please let us know in the comments below. Let's all learn from one another. And for those of you who would like to support my channel and my research, please be my patron on Patreon or be a member of my YouTube channel or get copies of any of my books, coloring books and ebooks or any of the merch linked down below. And if you haven't done so yet, make sure to subscribe and like this video to learn more about the Philippines, Southeast Asia, and beyond. You know, learning more about history, culture, and everything in between. Now back to our topic, starting with the Sultanate of Brunei, Darussalam. The National Day or Hari Nasional is celebrated in Brunei every year on the 23rd of February. This marks the date when the Sultanate of Brunei acquired full independence from Britain in 1984 after nearly a century of colonial rule. Unknown to many, the Sultanate of Brunei, despite being once one of the mightiest kingdoms in the history of Southeast Asia, was gradually turned into a British protectorate from 1888 onwards. And like many other parts of the British Empire, Brunei acquired a growing amount of self-governance in the 1950s and the 1960s. But it was not until 1984 that Britain's last ties to the Southeast Asian Sultanate were cut. And today, despite being a tiny state compared to what it was once was, Brunei has one of the world's highest standards of living thanks to its bountiful oil and gas reserves. The celebrations of Hari National focuses on Sultan Hassan al bolkia during which prayers are offered in mosques, followed by festivities with fervent patriotism. Now from Brunei, let's hop over to Singapore. And Singapore, which, you know, is one of the world's wealthiest and most prosperous countries, celebrates its national day every year on the 9th of August. And this is the day when, you know, in 1965, the Republic of Singapore declared its independence from Malaysia after just two years of officially being part of the Federation of Malaysia. Now, this city-state at the end of the Malay Peninsula had been a British colony since the first half of the 1800s, but it gained independence from Britain gradually in the aftermath of World War II. Now, Singapore's independence from Malaysia on August 9, 1965 marked a pivotal moment in the nation's history. 
Malay. After a brief merger with the Federation of Malaysia in 1963, political and ideological differences led to the separation of Singapore from Malaysia. And despite initial challenges, the nation successfully embarked on a remarkable journey of nation building, emerging as a thriving global city state known for its economic strength, cultural diversity, and impressive achievements. The history of Singapore's independence is a testament to the resilience, ingenuity, and unwavering spirit of its people, who transform a small island into a global powerhouse. Now from Singapore, let's sail across into Indonesia. Indonesia is the world's fourth most populous country and with over 270 million people across 1.86 million square kilometers, Indonesia is indeed the largest nation in Southeast Asia both in terms of land and in population. Indonesia's Independence Day is celebrated across the many islands of the country on the 17th of August every year, commemorating the nation's hard-fought struggle for freedom. Freedom. On this historic day in 1945, Indonesia declared its independence from Dutch colonial rule, marking the beginning of a new era. After almost four centuries of colonial rule, during which both the Dutch, the Portuguese, and the Japanese have occupied Indonesia as a colony. The journey of Indonesia towards independence was marked by the unwavering determination and sacrifices of Indonesian heroes who fought for self-governance and national unity. Today, Indonesian Independence Day or Hari Kemerdekaan is a time of national pride and celebration, and it serves as a reminder of Indonesia's rich cultural heritage, diversity, and the enduring spirit of its people. And as Indonesia continues to grow and develop as a modern nation, Hari Kemerdekaan or Independence Day remains a significant milestone honoring the struggles and the achievements that have shaped the country's identity and independence, and their ongoing commitment to building a prosperous and inclusive society. And now from Indonesia, let's go back to my motherland the Philippines. And as mentioned earlier, Independence Day in the Philippines is celebrated as a national holiday annually on June 12th. On this day in 1898, the Philippines proclaimed its independence from Spanish colonial rule after centuries of struggle, including the Katipunan-led revolution. The secret society, known as the Katipunan, played a pivotal role in the fight for freedom, led by Andres Bonifacio and many others. However, like many other nations in Southeast Asia, there was a complicated history in the aftermath of this declaration of independence, as the jubilation was short-lived. The First Philippine Republic faced a bitter and brutal war against the United States from 1899 to 1903, while many argue that this conflict persisted until 1913. Now, while initially supportive of Philippine independence, the United States struck a deal with Spain, acquiring the islands for $20 million. And the Philippines remained under American occupation until after the Second World War. But when full independence came in 1946, it arrived on the 4th of July, a date chosen by the United States in imitation of America's own Declaration of Independence from Britain on the 4th of July, 1776. However, the Filipino people quickly decided that Independence Day should be celebrated on June 12th rather than the 4th of July, which, you know, had imperialist overtones. And in 1962, then-President Justado Macapagal declared June 12th as a public holiday throughout the Philippines. By doing so, he distanced himself and the Philippines from the shadows of the United States. Makapagal's vision was for the Philippine Independence Day celebration to reflect the day Filipinos broke free and asserted their freedom, rather than commemorating the day granted by the colonizers. In fact, he eloquently stated that a nation is born free when its people, united through struggle and sacrifice, assert their natural right to liberty. Now, the history and the significance of Philippine Independence Day is quite complicated. So make sure to check out my earlier videos about this topic in both English and in Tagalog. And if you are new to my channel, I also have a series of videos about the fascinating history of the Philippine Revolution, the Philippine Independence, and the Filipino struggle for genuine liberation. So if you haven't seen them yet, make sure to watch them after this video. But for now, let's hop over to Myanmar. Myanmar, also known as Burma throughout much of its history as a British colony and subsequently as an independent nation, has had a complicated National Day or Independence Day. On the one hand, this is celebrated each year on the 4th of January in honor of Burma's declaration of independence from the British Empire back in 1948. However, the National Day of Myanmar is also celebrated on the 10th day following the full moon of Tazangmon, the 8th month of the 
the traditional Burmese calendar, a date which honors the first student riot in opposition to British rule in the region that happened at Rangoon University back in 1920. Now, this usually falls in early winter to midwinter. So for instance, in 2023, the National Day will be celebrated on the 7th of December, while in 2024, this National Day will fall on the 16th of November. Now from Myanmar, let's visit Southeast Asia's youngest independent nation, the island country of East Timor. The 28th of November is the National Day of the Democratic Republic of Timor-Leste, aka East Timor. The day was formally enshrined as a national holiday by the government of East Timor back in 2005. But by that point, it had already been celebrated informally for three decades because this day commemorates the date in 1975 when the independence movement on the island issued a unilateral declaration of independence. Now, East Timor had been a Portuguese colony since the 1600s, but following the Carnation Revolution in Portugal back in 1974 and the acceptance of the Portuguese government that it would have to grant independence to its remaining colonies, nationalists within East Timor declared independence. But sadly, this was followed by a bloody conflict. Indonesia's occupation of East Timor which began in 1975 was a period marked by deep divisions and immense suffering. The annexation was met with resistance from the East Timorese people, leading to a protracted and brutal conflict that resulted in significant loss of life and widespread human rights abuses. However, in 1999, a turning point was reached when East Timor held a referendum in which the majority of the population voted for independence. This marked a significant milestone in their journey towards self-determination and sovereignty. And since gaining full independence back in May 2002, East Timor or Timor-Leste has focus on rebuilding and consolidating its nation, and efforts have been made to address the wounds of the past and foster reconciliation as the country strives to build a peaceful and prosperous future. Today, Timor-Leste stands as a symbol of resilience and hope, with its people working towards sustainable development, social progress, and the preservation of their cultural heritage. The journey towards independence and the ongoing pursuit of peace serve as reminders of the enduring spirit of the East Timorese people. Now, the following countries and territories are, you know, not usually considered to be part of this modern day, this present day definition, geopolitical definition of what is now Southeast Asia. But nonetheless, these places, these countries and territories, given their proximity and cultural ties with our people, they have always been intertwined with the history, the culture, the society of what is now Southeast Asia. And you know, from food to languages and everything in between and the geopolitics of what is now Southeast Asia. Since the beginning of time, since the beginning of history. First up is Hong Kong. You know, Hong Kong is something of a peculiar case within China in terms of its national day. On the one hand, as a constituent part of the People's Republic of China, it celebrates the wider country's national day. The National Day of the People's Republic of China is celebrated every year on the 1st of October to commemorate the victory of the Chinese Communist Party in the Chinese Civil War in 1949. However, every year on July 1st, Hong Kong also celebrates the Hong Kong Special Administrative Region Establishment Day to celebrate the end of the British rule in Hong Kong in 1997 and to commemorate the establishment of Hong Kong as part of the People's Republic of China with certain specific rules and exceptions. Today, both days are celebrated as national holidays in Hong Kong. And from Hong Kong, let's hop over to its neighbor, Macau. The National Day of Macau, the small enclave in southeastern China, is complicated by its recent history. It was once a Portuguese colony for over four centuries, from the mid-1500s through 1999, when it was finally granted independence and was ceded to the People's Republic of China. And this happened on the 28th of December, 1999. As such, that date has a claim to being the Independence Day or National Day of Macau, given that the city and its environs still retain a degree of independence from the centralized rule in Beijing. 
However, just like in Hong Kong, the 1st of October is also celebrated as a national holiday given that Macau is now part of the People's Republic of China. And thus, much like Hong Kong, there are two national days celebrated in Macau. One commemorating Macau's independence from the Portuguese and the other one commemorating the victory of the People's Republic of China against the nationalist Kuomintang during the Chinese Civil War back in 1949. And speaking of the Chinese Civil War in 1949, on the island of Taiwan, the National Day of the Republic of China is celebrated annually on the 10th of October. And this does not relate to the Chinese nationalist decision to leave the Chinese mainland and take over Taiwan in 1949, but rather it hails all the way back to 1911 and the Wuchang uprising that overthrew the Qing dynasty and ushered in the first period of republicanism in China. It was celebrated as a public holiday on mainland China down to 1949, but following the communist victory in the civil war, these celebrations ended in the mainland. It is also worth noting that Taiwan's sovereignty status is a complex and contentious issue. While Taiwan operates as a separate political entity with its own government, military, and constitution, it is not universally recognized as an independent country. In fact, the People's Republic of China considers Taiwan to be part of its territory and maintains a one-China policy. However, Taiwan functions as a de facto independent nation with its own political and economic systems. It has established diplomatic relations with several countries and participates in various international organizations under the name of Chinese Taipei. The sovereignty status of Taiwan remains a subject of ongoing debate and diplomatic sensitivity, with different perspectives and opinions held by various countries and stakeholders. So from Taiwan, let's move over to another island nation. Papua New Guinea celebrates its independence each year on the 16th of September. This is a federal holiday in the country, the world's third largest island nation, one which marks the date on which the country achieved full independence from Australia in 1975. Papua New Guinea's colonial status had been a mix for over a century prior to this date, as the island was variously controlled by Australia, Britain, and Germany with governance status shifting between the 1880s and the 1940s. For instance, part of the island was taken over by Australia and Germany during the late 19th century, but German control lapsed after the end of the First World War. And from Papua, let's now sail towards our final stop in this journey in this video to the island nation of Palau. Now unknown to many, Palau's path to independence is actually intertwined with its historical connections to the Philippines. In fact, back in 1898, Palau was officially a part of the First Philippine Republic, a short-lived revolutionary government that sought independence from Spanish colonial rule. And the leaders of the Philippine Revolution, including then-president Emilio Aguinaldo, recognized Palau as an integral part of the newly declared republic. However, after the Spanish-American War in 1898 and the Philippine-American War in 1899, Palau, along with other territories, were transferred to German control. Subsequently, it came under Japanese administration during the First World War and was later placed under the trusteeship of the United States. Now, the people of Palau's aspirations for self-governance continued to grow, leading to negotiations between Palau and the United States that eventually resulted in Palau's independence independence on October 1, 1994. The significant milestone marked the culmination of Palau's long journey toward self-determination and the establishment of its own constitutional government. And as we come to the end of our journey throughout Southeast Asia and neighboring countries, we have witnessed the remarkable resilience, rich culture, and the unity that define this diverse region. From Myanmar to the Philippines, from Thailand to Malaysia, each nation's history and celebrations have left an indelible mark on its people and the world. Through the struggles and triumphs, these nations have emerged as proud independent entities, united in their pursuit of freedom and self-determination. Now, throughout the region's history, diverse communities have risen against colonial rule, oppressive regimes, and societal injustices, fighting for their rights and dignity. You know, from the protracted struggles for independence led by the figures like Sukarno in Indonesia, Ho Chi Minh in Vietnam, Aung San Suu Kyi 
Kuchi in Myanmar to the ongoing fight for indigenous rights for ethnic and religious equality in places like Malaysia, Thailand, Myanmar, the Philippines, Vietnam, and many others, Southeast Asia has witnessed an enduring quest for freedom. These struggles serve as a reminder of the resilience and determination of our people, inspiring future generations to strive for justice, democracy, and the recognition of all individuals' inherent worth. So may these National Days and Independence Days inspire us all to strive for a better society and a more inclusive world. You know, the National Days and Independence Days across Southeast Asia, these are not just dates on a calendar. You know, these are powerful symbols of unity, of resilience, and of deep cultural heritage. You know, as we reflect on the histories of our people, on our people's victory against oppression, as we honor their resilience, their, their hero heroism, in fighting for our people's freedom, let us also embrace the spirit of unity, you know, and celebrate the diverse and vibrant culture Cultures, the diverse people of Southeast Asia, the unique identities that make this region extraordinary, truly extraordinary. And you know, let's be honest, sometimes on social media, there's a lot of bickering about so many random things, you know, this is my culture, that's not yours. But in truth, we share a lot in common. We share a lot with each other. On the surface, it may not seem so, but to be honest, our people share a lot with each other. We have more things in common than what divides us. So together, let us continue to cherish and preserve the legacy of our ancestors, the legacy and the beauty of Southeast Asia. And let us continue to honor the collective journey towards liberation by building solidarity towards a brighter future for our diverse and beautiful people, for our children. And that is it for me today, so let me know what you think about today's topic in the comments below. And if you learned something new today, learned a thing or two, don't forget to like, share this video, comment down below, and please, please subscribe. And of course, this video will not be possible without the love and the support of all my patrons, subscribers, and viewers like you throughout these years. Kaya naman to all of you, maraming maraming salam Salamat po or into mapangan, dahil pong salamat in bahasa Melayu and bahasa Indonesia. Terima kasih. See you next time or in Tagalog Kita Kids and ikaw mapangan, Miki Tix or in bahasa Melayu, jumpa lagi and in Thai, jergan mai.